Hi. With all the mass hysteria surrounding the novel coronavirus or COVID-19... Vice dogs and cats living together. Mass hysteria. I thought I'd show you how to make your own hand sanitizer like this with uh, stuff you should have lying around your lab. Now, uh, this is not new for us, as in the EEV blog family. We've been carrying uh, hand sanitizer like this for donkey's years. In particular, Mrs. EEV blog, who is a uh, scientist, a chemist, and uh, is up on these sorts of things. So it's particularly uh, pertinent in today's climate. Now, I uh, I think I tweeted back in late January or something how that uh, mass hysteria had already started to take off in terms of like hand sanitizer just vanished overnight from all the stores in Australia and online and everything else. All those little hand sanitizers that you pay a premium for. But it's really easy to make these yourself. And I'll show you. Now, if you don't know the novel uh, coronavirus can actually be fairly easily uh, broken down and, uh, and you know effectively uh, deactivated really you could say destroyed but effectively uh, deactivated relatively easily just using uh, alcohol like isopropyl alcohol or ethyl alcohol but uh, your lab um, should have isopropyl alcohol because we use this in electronics to clean our PCBs and other stuff like that so yeah if you don't have isopropyl alcohol in your lab you should I or I always keep a couple of uh, liters available but when uh, this uh, thing happened I was almost I was getting that uh, quite low on my isopropyl so back in like uh, early February I um, ordered another uh, five liters and I you know this is like cheap stuff isopropyl alcohol you should have it it's like uh, like 15 bucks for five liters or something like it's really cheap stuff although they might be price gouging these days so I thought I'd show you how to make little hand sanitizers like this that you can just carry around in one of these uh, 50 mil bottles uh, you can pick these up on eBay for you can get like a dozen of these for like five bucks delivered they're an atomizer uh, spray so as you can see you might be able to see that it really uh, like it puts out a really fine mist and you just rub it on your hands fairly, you know, decent, spend a bit of, you know, effort actually uh, doing this. And if you do that thoroughly enough, hopefully, like it's not guaranteed, but it does help uh, deactivate all sorts of bacteria and yes, also viruses. Because if you don't know, the novel coronavirus is an RNA uh, virus. There's both DNA and RNA viruses. But these sorts of alcohols, these are effective against uh, any sort of what's called a lipid virus. So in this particular case, the novel coronavirus actually contains an outer shell of uh, proteins and it's fairly easy to break down those proteins with a uh, water and an either ethyl alcohol or isopropyl alcohol. Both of these at basically anything over 60% uh, dilution ratio, basically 60% alcohol, will actually deactivate uh, all sorts of stuff. It'll deactivate uh, coronavirus, in particular novel uh, coronavirus. It deactivates influenza, uh, herpes. Uh, herpes is actually a uh, DNA virus, not an RNA virus like the coronavirus. Uh, hepatitis B and all sorts of other stuff. So, you know, if you don't want to catch herpes off uh, <laughs> surfaces, people, you know, with those cold sores, got to watch out for them, then um, isopropyl alcohol is useful against all sorts of uh, viruses and other bacteria. It's great stuff. So what happens then is the virus just like uh, loses its bonds, so to speak, and just pretty much just falls apart and uh, dissolves into the water and becomes effectively inactive or denatured. So basically, if you mix uh, 60, at least 60% isopropyl alcohol, 70% uh, to like 80% is kind of like the recommended uh, value, which is why these medical swabs, which you've uh, seen me use in uh, various videos for cleaning up stuff, real handy little things, these are 70% isopropyl alcohol. These are medical swabs which you'll uh, get in hospitals and things like that. So if you're in the hospital and they're about to, you know, stick a needle into you or something like that, then uh, they might um, rub you down, or they should rub you down with a, uh, like an isopropyl, just to get rid of uh, any uh, bacteria or viruses just uh, hanging around to clean it up. So they're always, almost always, Ways are 70%. So if you're going to mix your own, 70%, good value. 
So what actually happens is the isopropyl alcohol, or the ethyl alcohol molecules and the water molecules actually uh, combine with the outer uh, lipid shells of the uh, proteins of the virus and effectively uh, break them down or what's called denature them. And uh, then effectively, yeah, there they become effectively inactive. So you've, at that point, you've pretty much killed it, but it's called denaturing. Now, of course, it's not guaranteed to be 100% effective because the coronavirus looks like it's like airborne as well. So you could be breathing it in or whatever, but at least you're uh, taking some measures to actually uh, protect yourself from like surface contacts and things like that. So when you get it on your hands and then you go touch your uh, face like hundreds of times a day as your average person does. Uh, by the way, for the last several months, I've been uh, training myself. I knew this was coming. So I've been training myself to actually not touch my face as much as possible. And it, it takes a lot of like discipline to get used to it. And you don't often notice that you're doing it, but with time and you know, just watching or noticing what you're doing, you can actually uh, reduce your dependence on touching your face, that sort of nervous habit of having a scratch or a rub or something like that. So yeah, I've been practicing that for the last couple of months and it's been paying results. Doesn't mean I'm not gonna get this thing, but anyway, you know, I got two kids and a wife and yeah, go to the gym and all sorts of stuff. So mm, it's not good. Could pick it up anywhere. Who knows? But anyway, um, at least disinfect surface. And this is great for like spraying on your keyboard and your mouse. You should be doing this daily. Like just get a 70% isopropyl mixture, spray it on your keyboard and your mouse because that's where like viruses and bacteria and things love to hang out. And like you can use it, you can spray buttons in the lift and things like that. And you know, all sorts of like surfaces and handrails and all sorts of stuff. Not only to help protect yourself, but help protect our others as well. Anyway, so what we're going to do is just put some isopropyl in here. This is a, just a smaller nozzle, so let's put some in there like that. Right, so you want about 70% isopropyl like that, and then you would uh, just put in 30% water typically. Now, that's great, and it's uh, very effective. Unfortunately, when you spray that on your hands, it does really dry out uh, your hands very quickly because it evaporates, and your, your hands and skin is just left like really dry and stuff like that. So what I've got here, and this is totally optional, and it adds absolutely no value to uh, de deactivating or denaturing uh, any viruses or bacteria. Um, I've got some food grade glycerin here and this is used in all sorts of you know baking and uh, beverage and also cosmetic and personal care and stuff like that and it's basically a moisturizer. It effectively works as a moisturizer. So if we whack you know maybe say five you know a few percent five percent you don't need much. So it is a bit gloopy like that. So just add some of that in and that will help. And I'll just whack some water in this, go over the tap. So there you go, I've added some water. Whack that in there and the glycerin's down the bottom like that. But you wanna just give it a good shaker like that. And Bob's your uncle. We've got ourselves some nice disinfectant spray for our fingers and surfaces and keyboards and handrails, whatever you're uh, touching and that is much better. I can, this is not feel a vision, but uh, trust me that your hands feel a little bit more moisturized and less uh, dried out with the glycerin. But as I said, it's optional. We've just used like a 70% isopropyl in the past. So anyway, there you go. That's how you can make your own hand spray. Don't go out in the supermarket and fight for it because it's exactly the same stuff. I mean, there is other uh, types of disinfectants out there, but the most effective against uh, these lipid viruses like coronavirus and herpes and influenza and hepatitis B and all those sorts of stuffs is at least 70% isopropyl alcohol, but it typically comes in like this is 99.8%. So you, you can actually buy it already pre-mixed at 70% if you want to do that. No wackers, but uh, everyone's got water. So like, yeah, uh, feel free to just buy the 100% stuff. And this is great for cleaning your PCBs. So yeah, I highly recommend picking up. You should have like at least a litre of this in your lab. Um, 
um, at any one time. I always kept like at least a litre here just to uh, clean at PCBs and uh, other things. So it's great stuff. And I love the uh, Medi swabs. You've seen me use these in many, many videos because they come with a little uh, cloth thing in there. And, you know, it's great for wiping off like heat, si heat sink compound and just generally uh, like cleaning up a bit of secondhand gear you get on eBay or something like that. So they're really handy. I recommend like you can buy like boxes of those for fairly cheap. I don't know what the prices are these days. People are price gouging uh, stuff these days. It's like absolutely crazy. Let's not mention the dunny roll, shall we? And no, this is definitely not a substitute for soap and washing your hands. And soap actually uh, deactivates or denatures the virus, the outer protein shells, in the same way that uh, alcohol does, basically. But yeah, this is not a substitute for that. But hey, when you're out and about, you can't, like, carry soap and have running water and stuff like that. So yeah, the most effective method, of course, is to wash your hands thoroughly with, you know, 20 seconds. And even in my uh, lab here, my uh, office building here, they've now got... Uh, uh, signs up there on how to wash your hands in the bathroom. So they're everywhere. And yeah, this is um, going to be really good uh, long term. People are going to be hopefully uh, more vigilant about this sort of stuff during uh, flu seasons and things like that. So yeah, we've only just come out of summer here. So maybe that's helping in because heat does actually um, have an effect uh, on the outer uh, protein shells as well. So there you go. I hope you learned something there. And I recommend you go out and just make your own disinfectant spray. It's just, it, it really is quite nice and you get into the habit of like using this every time you touch something before you especially before you eat and things like that and especially when you've got kids you know once we started having the kids uh yeah the little petri dish breeding grounds of uh bacteria and viruses that kids are um yeah like we're always spraying their hands every time like they come back from the playground before they eat and things like that so we're all i'm always carrying one of these in my pocket and when i go to a restaurant before i eat or something we, we just spray it on our hands and we've been doing this for donkey's years so it's not just the mass hysteria here but anyway hope you found that useful if you did please give it a big a thumbs up as always discussed down below and check out my channel and subscribe over on a library you can go to evblog.tv or over just search library.tv for evblog i'm like number five in the world with a bullet catch you next time